Morning guys. Well, the uh, search for a boat is over. Uh, I've bought a Benetel first, 305, 1988. It was the, uh, the one that was abandoned. So it's been floating for two years uh, and sort of uh, pulled up um, in the graveyard of boats. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to this. It's going to be a, a, a neat project. Messi be blown away. Just dropped me off. So this is Driscus. Benatel first 305, 1988. And first job. See if the dinghy will blow up. The lamp is um, pump. So we're gonna give that a go. See what happens. Okay, so I've cleared this side out and filled a load of bin bags, which I'm going to take. The dinghy, uh, two out of the three sides are staying up, one's going down, but uh, I'm sure I'll be able to manage. These are pretty much empty in here. The guy was obsessed with underpants and socks. So many different underpants and socks just lying around the place. Amazing. Anyway, um, so now I've got this area. I'm going to basically wash all this lot down God knows what I'm going to do about this, but uh, it needs cleaning first, and then we'll deal with deal with what's under there. Uh, and I'm thinking, if I just wash this side down, I can start moving things from here that I want to keep over here, and then clear all this side out. Looks like there might be some useful tools there. Have a look in here. These were all empty. So uh, I'm not holding out much hope for this side, but we'll have a look in here. And then once we clean this out, I can start on the V-Birth and uh, we can work through. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And it's hot in here. Thankfully, this opens. So I'm going to basically open this, but you better close the cockpit like that. To be open to be able to open this side like that and then it lets some air in so i'll put this cushion outside just to air and then we can work from there and, uh, still got the bilge to empty at the moment because that's looking pretty horrible in fact it's looking very diesely to be honest so um yeah so i'll get the bilge pump going in a second i've brought it down I just need to wire it up to the battery. Uh, I was hoping to find some decent connectors to be able to use to rob. I haven't found any yet. So that's why I'm going to clear out this side and just see what we've got and work from there. Okay, so the bilge is coming dry. But I'll tell you now, more than anything else, this worries me because this is an earthing strap. And it's earthing to the keel. And if you look at the state of these keel bolts, they're not particularly good. So, yeah, that worries me. But we'll get the rest of the water pumped out and uh, cleaned up, and then we'll trace where this earthing strap should go and see what's what. Okay, so the keel is more or less dry. Um, but it's going to continue to drain into there because there's little drops of moisture and it's going to come through you know where you've got the pipes in between and all that sort of stuff so you can see this sort of brown crud around the outside so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the boards back down leave it overnight let it all drain down and then i'm going to do the same again tomorrow uh, with some cleaner and uh, just see if i can get it a bit cleaner in there and uh, so it doesn't smell so that's uh, that's looking all right now so uh, on to the next job okay so I've wiped everything down in there um, I think I know what I'm going to do with that ceiling um, so uh, we'll see 
I've wiped everything down in here. And again, I think I know what I'm going to do with the ceiling. I've taken the cushions off so I can get them washed. Although looking at the state of these foam backs, I think I might need to do something with those as well. I'm not quite sure what yet, so I'm going to ask the experts. The floor is back down and I've wiped it, but I've stood on it, so it's got um, trainer marks on it. But I'm not taking my trainers off at the moment in here. I'm sorry, but the floor's just too ugh. So it is alright, good going over. I wiped the table down, uh, wiped all the sides. These speakers need to go. Yeah, but it's looking a lot better until you turn around because I haven't done any of this lot yet. So this lot still to do and uh, work backwards. So the worst is yet to come, so that's tomorrow's job. <sighs> okay, but yeah, we'll see. Just following that earth wire back and yep, yeah, Look at this, it goes back here to this, whatever this is, and then on. So I need to get behind here to take a look at where that goes. But yeah, and of course, every single seacock is seized. So, yeah. Okay, so today, today hasn't gone as planned so far, but I've done this bit. No, it's clean. I know, Mum, if you're watching, this is not clean, clean. It's not Mum clean, but it's better than it was. And my reasoning behind this is basically because if I'm going to move in, I need to at least make it sort of habitable and work from there. So, next thing, this. One of my biggest challenges on this boat is keeping all of the cameras charged so I could do videos so because this is all I've got and that's charging the laptop uh, and that's charging the spare battery for this camera I've got something like 85% on the phone and I've got my little uh, trusty Panasonic here uh, but the battery on this is dead I'm hoping I've got a spare one lying around uh, Bluetti if you're listening, I could do with a sponsor. I am, however, finding tools, which is good. And there's the engine rocker cover. But it looks as though there's a couple of bolts that have been taken out that I need to find. Plus, there's a lot of rust. I need to clear off that. Uh, and see, we need to work out how we can get that out. So, that's a job for another day. Okay, but at least we've got some tools. And I've just got another leak, look. Can you see this? This is the shaft seal. Drip, drip, drip. So we're getting quite a bit of water there. Which is floating through underneath the engine. But at the moment it's not got to the main keel yet. But it will do. When it does, we can deal with it. So I'm going to keep an eye on that while I'm still here. Uh, great stuff. Right. So I put the rocket cover just back on hand tight. Uh, and I think it's because I've disturbed these pipes that it's starting to drip, which is really a shame. But we'll see. Um, there's the air filter, it's got to go on there, um, I need to probably take this off so I can get to the front of the engine just to see what that looks like. And I've got these pipes here which are the fuel injector pipes, um, these two look alright, this one hmm, looks a bit worse for wear but hopefully it'll be all right once it's on. So we shall see. 
We shall see. Yeah. Okay. But I want to put it back together so I can make sure it's all complete before I start actually taking it apart properly. Um, and I think I'm going to basically wait until we're ashore before I take it apart. Um, we've got wires loose there. Need to work out what those are. Headlining's hanging down at the back, so I need to do something about that. But, yeah, we're, we're moving forward slowly. Well, I just pulled about the same amount of water as yesterday out of the bilge, so it's about an eighth of a, uh, a bucket. So I can live with that, uh, basically, until she comes out of the water. Because uh, I think that needs definitely the stern ground and the um, raw water stop cock that is uh, leaking. So I'll get those fixed and we should be all good to go. Cushion covers have arrived, so I need to put those on once I've uh, tied it up a bit. And if they're okay, I'll take the rest of them out. I have been into here and as you can see I've moved all of the stuff out of there. I need to clean yet uh, but I'm still working what's missing working out what's missing on this engine. Um, this is the um, water pump but I don't think it's actually the water pump for this engine believe it or not. Um, looks different to what's in the manuals. And we've got some pipes missing as well, so I'm going to work out what's what. Start putting the batteries back together. Yeah, um, bag of bits down there. So just going to work out what's what. Okay, morning guys. Back for day three. And uh, I just bought a new dinghy. Well, not new, new, but second and new. The dinghy and the outboard have cost me as much as the boat. But at least it's not going down every five seconds. So uh, there is a slight leak at the front. You can see where it's all patched, but uh, it stays up for at least three or four days before it starts to go soft. So I've got transport to and from. I've got a um, decent engine there. Uh, so uh, yeah, back to work, back to work. So you can see what, um, how much water's inside now because um, as I say yesterday when I left the boat it was leaking so let's see what we've got in here and yeah a little bit of water but not much that's what I expected to be honest uh, so back to working in here and again a little bit of water it's not too bad so we'll get to uh, get dried out and then we'll get cracking i think and uh, see what we can do well my dinghy last night capsized on me now in my defense i am used to a much heavier grp dinghy and uh, this thing was like a little roller skate unfortunately that means that the engine was upside down in water so i've now got to cleaning out so that is not a task I wanted to do but it's the next task okay so I've had the car off cleaned it drained the oil taken the spark plug out dried it cleaned out the uh, cylinder so we shall see what happens shall we where should I put you uh, not easy to do this because I've not got the kill cord to pull that and pull that so I'm going to try and pop you down somewhere what do you reckon what if I pop you somewhere on here would that work yeah how's that Yeah, 
good. Obviously, don't want to run it with no water, so we'll put the lid back on and we'll stick it back on the dinghy.